Hello and welcome to the channel. Geometry is often viewed as a separate part of math, vaguely related to the other mathematical disciplines. However, quite a number of facts that appear very distant from geometry can actually be proven in a purely geometrical way. This video deals with the purely geometrical proof of some perfectly well-known algebraic identities. And we start with the simplest one, a product of two sums each having two terms in it, a plus b times c plus d. Take a rectangle m and p q, where side m q has length a plus b, side m n has length c plus d. The area of rectangle m and p q is a plus b times c plus d, and we need to find this area. Let's draw on side m q segment m e with length a. Then the length of remaining segment e q is b. Through point e we draw a line parallel to sides m n and p q, meeting the opposite side n p at point f. In the similar way, on side m n we draw segment m g with length c, so the remaining segment g n has length d. Guess what we do next? Of course, we draw segment gh parallel to sides mq and np, where point h belongs to the opposite side pq. And let O be the common point of segments ef and gh. Segments ef and gh split rectangle m and pq into four rectangles, with areas AC, AD, BD, and BC. The only remaining thing is to write that the area of rectangle M and PQ equals the sum of the areas of inner rectangles. And substitute the values of the areas. The result is a well-known algebraic identity. In particular, when C equals A and D equals B, Rectangles MGOE and EOHQ turn into squares with sides A and B respectively, while the remaining rectangles GNFO and EOHQ become equal to each other with one side equal to A, another side equal to B. Therefore, both rectangles have area A times B. At the same time, the whole rectangle M and PQ turns into a square with side A plus B. All that gives another well-known formula for the square of A plus B. This approach can be also applied to an arbitrary number of terms in each of two sums. The following drawing applies to sum of three terms multiplied by sum of two terms. Since 3 times 2 is 6, we have 6 inner rectangles, consequently 6 terms in the right-hand side of the identity. In case both sums have 3 terms, we get 9 rectangles and 9 terms in the right-hand side. In particular, if f equals a, g equals b, and h equals c, there are three squares and three pairs of equal rectangles, while the whole rectangle becomes a square of side a plus b plus c. This gives the formula for a square of three terms added up. Now let's move on to product of a difference to a difference a minus b times c minus d. Again we take rectangle m and p q. However, this time the length of MQ equals just A, and the length of MN equals just C. On the side MQ, this time from point Q, we draw segment EQ with the length B, in which case the length of remaining segment ME is A minus B. And again we draw segment EF parallel to sides MN and PQ where point F belongs to side NP. Also, on the side MN we draw segment GN with length 
D. Hence, the remaining segment MG has length C minus D. And as you certainly guessed, we draw segment GH parallel to sides MQ and NP, where point H belongs to the opposite side PQ. Again, we use letter O to denote the point where lines EF and GH meet. This time, we need to find the area of rectangle MGOE, which is A minus B times C minus D. To find this area, we subtract from the area of whole rectangle MNPQ the areas of rectangle GNPH and EFPQ. As a result of that, the area of rectangle OFPH is subtracted twice. In order to neutralize this effect, the area of rectangle OFPH has to be added. And we substitute the areas of the rectangles. The area of rectangle MGOE is A minus B times C minus D. The area of the whole rectangle MNPQ is of course A times C. The area of rectangle GNPH is A times D. The area of rectangle EFPQ is B times C. And the area of rectangle OFPH is B times D. And we obtained exactly what we expected. In particular, assuming C equals A and D equals B, we get the identity for the difference of two numbers squared. And one more identity of this type. Sum of two numbers multiplied by a difference of two numbers. A plus B times C minus D. A mixture of two previously considered identities. And the drawing for this identity also represents a mixture. This time in rectangle MNPQ, side MQ has length A plus B, while the length of side MN is just C. On the side MQ we draw segment ME having length A, so the length of segment EQ is B. And again we draw segment EF parallel to you know what, where point F lies you know where. On side MN the length of segment GN equals D, while the length of segment MG equals C minus D. And again we draw segment GH and again get point O. Our objective is the area of rectangle MGHQ, which is A plus B times C minus D. This area is equal to the area of whole rectangle MNPQ minus the area of rectangle GNFO minus the area of rectangle OFPH. At the same time, the area of the whole rectangle MNPQ can be represented as the sum of areas of rectangles MNFE and EFPQ. Combining these two equations gives the expression for the area of MGHQ in terms of four areas evaluated straight away. And once again we get a well-known formula. In particular, when C equals A and D equals B, rectangles MNFE and OFPH turn into squares, with side lengths A and B respectively, while the rectangles GNFO and EFPQ both have one side equal to A, another side equal to B. So the areas of both are A times B, which are cancelled out, leaving just A squared minus B squared. Given the examples, try to prove on your own the following identities. The difference of squares is just 4 times a times b, while the sum is 2a squared plus 2b squared. Both derived from already mentioned identities for the squares of a plus b and a minus b using algebraic transforms. Think about proving the identities directly in a purely geometric way.
This is how it was suggested in the article published in the journal The Mathematics Teacher back in 1981. The article is available for reading online from JSTOR's site. For the difference, the drawing is quite obvious. The side length of the whole square is A plus B. Therefore, its area is the square of A plus B. After separating the area of the inner square, which is the square of A minus B, the remaining area is composed of four rectangles, each having one side equal to A, another side equal to B. Therefore, the result is 4A times B. For the second equality, the drawing is a bit trickier. This time we have an angular shape composed of two squares with side lengths a plus b and a minus b. So the total area of the shape is a plus b squared plus a minus b squared. However, the shape can be split in a different way. As composed of two squares area b squared each, one square of area a squared and two rectangles with areas adding up to a squared. This can be demonstrated by placing one of the rectangles close to another one. All that leads to the conclusion that the area of the whole angular shape is 2a squared plus 2b squared and the identity is proven. In conclusion, let's prove the identity for the cube of a plus b. This time I couldn't find anything better than making a 3D drawing. This is supposed to be a cube, even though it looks more like an oblong. The rib length is a plus b, therefore the volume is the cube of a plus b. The whole cube is composed of 8 solid shapes. The yellow cube having a rib a and therefore the volume a cubed. The purple cube having rib B and the volume B cubed. Three green rectangular parallel pipettes adjacent to the yellow cube. Two of them are clearly seen, while the third parallel pipette is hidden behind the yellow cube and below the pink parallel pipette on the back. These three parallel pipettes have two ribs equal to A and one rib equal to B. Therefore, each of them has volume a squared times b, and the total volume is 3 times a squared times b. Finally, there are three pink rectangular parallel pipers adjacent to the purple cube. These parallel pipers have one rib equal to a and two ribs equal to b. Each of them has the volume of a times b squared and the total volume is 3 times a times b squared. The identity is complete and this is the end.